This is the second out of the three part IG Live Welcome the Tantrums and my goal is to empower you to manage tantrums with confidence. We are also celebrating the opening of my online course From Yelling to Connecting where I empower parents to yell lesser and to be able to manage their triggers and to guide their children to become emotionally resilient children so if you haven't heard you know you can join me i'm inviting you for this four week program and you can find out more from the link in my bio or go to our little slash fytc okay so i'm really excited to have you guys here i know many of you have seen familiar names you've been here yesterday so the goal of today is since we know what tantrums are and we also know how to press the pause button so that we don't react, what are we going to do next? All right. So my question to you is, well, okay, how do you, how do you respond to your child's tantrums? Okay. Do you yell at them? Think about it. All right. Do you yell at them? Do you share your calm? Do you have no response? Okay, so we want to think about what happens if our kids are in a reactive mode and we become reactive as well. Do you think that we are going to end up solving the problem together? Unlikely. But if your child is reactive and you are there to contain them and to keep them safe, you stand a higher chance of getting your kids to calm down. So after you have pressed the pause button, we are going to calm your child down. So you calm yourself by pressing the pause button, then you calm your child down. But it's easier said than done, isn't it? If you tell your kids calm down, unlikely they're not going to calm down because they need to see how you calm down. So we are going to talk about co-regulation before I answer your questions, okay? So in order to get your kids to calm down, I'm going to jump straight into the strategy that I want you to try out. And that is to remember that you and your child are on the same team. Yesterday, some of you mentioned that you are easily triggered when your kids refuse to go to bed and stalling bedtime. Now, what do I mean by being on the same team as your child? It means you and your child versus getting to bed early. Or you and your child versus the school homework or the spelling. Or it's you and your child versus the broccoli. Or you and your child versus the shoes or the socks that your child needs to put on. Why do I say that? What's the difference? Now, if you are going to be against your child, you versus your child, telling your child, you need to put on your shoes, you need to eat your vegetables, you need to turn off the TV, the child becomes very defensive. And when that happens, it is very difficult for you to gain cooperation from your child. So, the strategy today is to be on the same team and I'm going to share with you ways to do that. You can do it through verbal and non-verbal communication. So I'm going to get you to brainstorm a few words that you can say to your child to help your child feel that you are on his team. And if you can think of something, please feel free to type it in the comments. Okay, what are you going to say to your child to make your child feel that you are with him or her? Before we go into that, as you're thinking about it, I will share with you the non-verbal part of being on the same team with your child. Firstly, okay, I hope you can try this. Sit beside or stand beside your child instead of opposite your child. If you are talking to your child this way and you are pointing at your child, okay, if I'm pointing at you right now, can you see that you know, that you feel like you're being pointed at, you don't really feel very open, you don't feel welcomed at all. But if I'm going to sit beside you and talk to you, like, hey, what's going on? You know, oh, you're having a hard time now. It feels different and that helps the child feel that you are on the same team as him or her. So the body language, sitting beside, 
or standing beside your child and not pointing at your child, that's one way for you to work on your non-verbal communication. Okay, then there's also the part about the volume. Now, the louder you talk to them, the more difficult it is to gain cooperation. Nobody likes to be yelled at. Now, one of the strategy that I often try with my kids is that instead of talking to them, I will whisper to them. I talk really softly to get their attention. So, you know, if they are throwing a tantrum, of course, when they are in the peak of the tantrum, we're not going to whisper to our kids, right? We are going to press the pause button. We are going to help our kids feel that we are on the same team as them. And how do we do that? We can sit beside the child. We can hold the child's hands. We can talk really softly and help the child feel, you know, to let his or her guard down to see that this is a very safe and supportive environment. Mommy and daddy are going to be here for you unconditionally. So some of you, you know, suggested very good phrases and I think we can all learn this together. So Lauren shared that if you want to help your child feel that you're on the same team, use the word we instead of you. We are going to work on getting you to do your homework together. We are going to be here for you, all right? Um, one of the parents, Yang, said, let's do this together. Or, I hear you, this is tough. Thank you, Helsa. So, many of you have um, shared certain um, scripts that you can try. So, the idea is to help your child see that mommy and daddy are here with me. They're not going to leave me alone. So, things that you don't want to say, will be labeling your child, you are always very lazy or you are not able to get this done. I've repeated several times. How many times must I tell you before you listen? So when you say words like that, it makes the children feel that, hey, you know, it's my fault. I'm the problem and eventually our kids are going to internalize that they become the problem. But right now, I want you to separate the person from the problem. Your child is good. They are just having a hard time at that moment. And that can help you then welcome whatever cries they have because you know they have limited ability to try to manage it. Okay, so for those who have just joined us, we talk about being on the same team as your child. Verbal, um, in terms of your verbal communication, will be the kind of words that you use in terms of your non-verbal communication, which is equally important as well to go beside the child instead of standing opposite the child, to lower your volume, and also you can reflect the language that your child is repeating. I know some children don't quite like it, especially the older kids, so you can try and test out to see whatever works for you. So, to welcome the cries, to welcome the emotional outbursts after you have calmed yourself down, you want to work on connecting with your child, and that can be seen as just sitting beside your child and not saying a word. It can also look like you, you know, attuning to your child and say, you are having a hard time now. I know you wish that you can eat ice cream. I know you wish that you can stay with mommy and daddy all night and you don't have to go to bed. Helping your child feel seen and heard is then the point of today's session for you to remember that only when there's connection, there will be cooperation and even if you know your children are crying, you understand that they are going through a hard time because you know that they don't have that skills to match up to the emotions that they're experiencing. Okay? Um, there are more words that I want to share, right? For example, you can tell your child, I know it is hard because some parents have to ask me, you know, I don't really know how to label my kids' feelings. I don't know how to help my child feel connected to me because whatever I say seems to be wrong or I don't really know whether my child is angry or upset. So certain more gener generic words like, I know it is hard for you right now, okay? Then you can pause and wait. So one of the, something I forgot to mention is that when you are communicating with your kids, you are trying to help your child feel that they are, we are the same team, you need to provide a lot of wait time and to just listen. This is something a lot of us don't do because we're always in a rush. We're always moving on to the next task, trying to accomplish things, and we cannot take the cries and the tantrums. So in the end, we just want to get, to get them to stop. But your job is not to stop the tantrum. If you want to stop the tantrum, you need to share your calm and model how to stop a tantrum. Okay? At the moment, it's going to be really difficult. You feel like you know, it's lasting forever. I'm in a rush. 
But over time, if your kids can see that you are always having this predictable response, it is much easier for your child to calm down. Okay? I will answer the questions. I hope to answer more questions today. And also along the way, just to reiterate what I've shared over the last um, yesterday and today. So let's see. We have a question on what if the child asks us to go away? Pretty common because the kids are maybe in the flight response. They just want to be alone. Now, it depends on the age of your child and also um, issues about safety. So if the child wants to be in the room um, with the doors closed, but your child is really young, I probably no won't encourage that. But if your child insists on being alone, you can keep the door open, stay maybe about one or two meters away to let your child know that you want to be alone. We are going to be here when you are ready. You can come over. For the older children, for example, you have teenagers, when they really want their private time, I think it's okay for the teenager to then go into the room with the doors closed. So it depends on how old your child is and you also know the temperament of your kids. Of course, always prioritize safety. I have ever heard of this um, story, this parent, she told me that the girl, about five year old, wants to be alone in the room and uh, to have the doors closed. So she asked me if that's the right way or not. She said that she's concerned because the room has windows and the windows doesn't have any grills on it. So I told her, can you go back home and install the grills right now? Because we want to ensure the safety of the child. And secondly, you know, if you, your child needs that space, make sure that you always have her in your line of sight. So you can tell her to open the door a little such that you can see your child, okay? Um, will there be a replay for the life? Yes, there will be the replay for the life. Does just sitting beside really help even if I'm not talking to them? Just letting them melt one meter away? Okay, so there's a difference between sitting and then you know, using your phone versus sitting and looking at your child and holding your child's hands. We call this holding space. It's like you go for therapy and the therapist is there listening to you, allowing you that space and the support for you to just pour your heart out. That is what we call holding space. And that's why people like to go to a therapy and it's really, really helpful because you feel like I can empty everything out. So now you are the therapist to your child, sitting beside your child and really listening, even though you feel annoyed and frustrated that, you know, it's happening again. I've told you many times not to snatch toys from your siblings, you end up, the kids are fighting. And it's so hard for you to just sit beside and hold space, right? So that's why you need to press the pause button. If you are watching this for the first time, I highly recommend you watch the replay on how you need to manage yourself first. Then you can manage your kids and you can co-regulate to help your child calm down, okay? And to co-regulate, you really need to be calm yourself. Genuinely find out why is your child behaving this way? Why is your child having this outburst? What happened? You know, listen from their point of view because you are on his team. You guys are teammates. So you cannot be ignoring your teammate. You need to work together with your teammate. You need to ask questions when appropriate. You need to provide solutions and work together. All right, my three-year-old tells me I'm upset and sometimes tells me I don't like you. I would think that this I don't like you is a fight response or even a freeze response because this three-year-old doesn't know how else to cope. When a three-year-old tells you that I don't like you, please don't take it personally because your definition of like I don't like you and their definition might be different. So your three-year-old might be thinking that, you know, I don't like it that I don't get chocolates to eat, you know, before dinner. But to you, I don't like you means that the child hates you. So there are different definitions and we don't want to talk about this with a three-year-old. We want to be the informed adult, like I mentioned, to understand that this child is having a hard time. So that's where you, as the teammate, you have to be beside your child and support your child all the way. Okay, today's session is for me to speak up for the little ones.
because they really don't know how to communicate with you well. But if you take time to read about how kids develop their needs, then you can meet them at where they are. What if you are really in a rush and waiting is not an option? Okay, if you are really, really in a rush, like you need to bring the child off and the child is crying, press the pause button yourself first, all right? Make sure that you don't join in the chaos, so calm yourself down. And if you need to carry the child to move along, do that, okay? If you need to get the child going, um, you don't have time to you know, sit beside the child, then just move along. The more effective way of teaching is to wait for, you know, maybe when everyone is calm and receptive and talk about the incident, process it with your child and try to preempt future scenarios and work with your child again, be the teammate, figure out how we can solve the problem. Okay, um, let me see what else. I tried to reward them for consistently following the boundary. Now, it really depends on what boundary it is. I ha have never been a fan of rewards. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to give reward chart, especially for things that the kids need to be motivated to want to do it um, themselves. So, for example, um, doing homework is something that I, I don't recommend you give rewards for. Completing homework. Uh, you know, doing their chores or keeping their stuff because these are things that they need to be motivated to do it themselves. They need to understand why they need to do it. Um, yeah, so I don't really recommend rewarding. I do suggest teaching intrinsic motivation. We want to play the long game, right? If you're constantly rewarding them, they will reach an age where, you know, I don't want to be rewarded anymore. I don't need the rewards anymore and or the rewards don't entice me. So why do I want to keep doing it? So I know that some parents give rewards to their kids if they share their toys, right? And, um, you know, one day your child is going to learn that, no, I don't need it anymore. Um, or are you going to give me a toy if I, are you going to give me a reward if I share a toy with my sibling? And then the entire motivation is wrong. Okay, so talking about intrinsic motivation, um, for those of you who sign up for From Your Link to Connecting by today and tomorrow, you will get this Intrinsic Motivation Masterclass as well as a Growth Mindset Masterclass Toolkit where I teach you how to use words to guide your children to work on their motivation, to get them to not give up easily, be resilient. And um, for those who have signed up, you should already have it. And the uh, early bird bonus expires tomorrow. Okay, so this is just a shout out for you. For those of you who are actually looking to sign up, you can get that as part of your early bird bonus. Okay, Lauren asks, my four-year-old tells me he doesn't want to go to school and that he misses me and wants to spend time with me. How may I get his buy-in to be fast Getting ready for preschool in the mornings. How many of you have uh, challenges to get your kids to cooperate in the morning? Okay, raise your hand up here. I think many of us experience that it is very challenging. So we know that it's going to happen. If the child says, I'm going to miss mommy and I want you to be there, be on the same team as your child. I know you're going to miss me so much. Do you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Then you go over to your child's ears and whisper to your child, I miss you too. So let your child feel that, oh, mommy gets me, daddy understands me. Let your child know that when you go to school, mommy will go to work, we'll come back and meet again. You know, for children who have school anxiety, there are certain tricks that you can, not tricks, but certain tips that you can do, like drawing a heart shape in your child's, on your child's palm. Okay, um, about getting ready for school in the morning, actually really making sure they have enough sleep. That will cut down, you know, the the tantrums by half, fifty percent chance that they will not throw a tantrum if they have enough sleep. Then the other part is when they have predictability. So a lot of times when the kids cannot predict what's going to happen, it leads to anxiety. So anxiety is like a combination of different types of emotions that they experience. And yesterday I talked about how they have the um anxiety or big feelings, but yet they lack the skills to manage it. So this gap here is where we want to come in to bridge the gap. To help our kids see that I know you're having a hard time, I'm your teammate and I want to help you to manage that. So getting things ready the day before really helps. For me, I have a lot of charts. I have a lot of um, a reminders to get the kids to know what they need to expect to get to school. Okay. 
Michelle asks, how do we help the child if he's overactive, suspected ADHD, and he's constantly saying spiteful words? Okay, this is really, really hard because we clearly know this child is having a hard time. But yet, at the same time, it's so hard for us adults to manage it. Okay, number one thing to do, again, press the pause button. When you press the pause button, you tell yourself, don't take it personally. My child is having a hard time. He doesn't mean what he say. I'm doing my best. As a mom, I'm the best mom ever for my child. And I'm going to help my child. So when you can shift your mindset to see that you are on the same team as your child, then you can approach your child with more empathy instead of frustration. So this idea of being on the same team is something that can be very, very powerful because you then see that you are going to truly be there for your kids unconditionally. It doesn't have matter you know, if your child is behaving well or not behaving well. We know that is our own kid. And we, if we are not there to help the kid, then who else is going to help the kid? Okay? So, of course, if the child is overactive, um, I'm sure, I don't know, you might want to go find out about um, ways to help a kids who have suspected ADHD. I am not special needs trained, even though I've taught some of the special needs students when I was a teacher. Um, I feel that there are certain strategies that you can try with these kids and um, specifically to co-regulate. Okay, this is um, one way which I recommend you go and uh, you know, find out more about how do you co-regulate with your child who is overactive because if you are joining in, it's harder for the child to calm down. So there are certain um, words that you can use or maybe um, certain cards. Like for example, I've ever seen this red light, green light card thing, right? So if the, you feel that the child is a bit too much or you can guide the child to see, okay, now we want to move to green light. What can we do? Taking deep breaths, um, doing some certain jumps and all to help the child calm down, okay? Do these methods work mainly for the main caregiver? Do they, do they work for grandparents or relatives who visit once weekly? Okay, so I guess talking about the methods will... Um, you'll probably be referring to the fact that we can empathize with our kids, we can be kind and set boundaries at the same time. So this is what essentially positive parenting is about. For you to show that you are listening, you practice active listening, you are empathizing with your child, but at the same time you can still set firm boundaries. It can work for grandparents and relatives as well. But I would say as long as you're consistent, you know the kids will know. You know, our children are very intelligent. They know whose buttons they can push. They know that when they are with daddy, they can watch screen time a little bit longer. When they're with mommy, they are... Mommy is very strict about screen time. I'm talking about my true story in my home. So the kids will know. But as long as, you know, one caregiver show up to provide that kind of um, support, um, that kind of... Um, Press a warm presence and sturdy leadership and it's easier for the child. Okay. Um, what should we do if the meltdown or tantrum happens in the public? Our two-year-old recently started lying flat on the floor or crawl in public when she got upset. Uh, okay, we don't want that to happen, right? Because when it happens in public, I think for many of us, we think that everyone is staring at us, looking at what we're going to do. And it can be... It can really cloud our judgment because you are then concerned about what other people think and not focus on your child. So if that happens, I urge you to really ignore what people are doing. Okay, Don't, don't really care about the, uh, what people are, are saying or looking. Um, focus on your child because that's the easiest way to get out of the tantrum. I would say to bring your child to a quieter place in the public. So if the child starts lying flat on the floor or crawling in the public when she got upset, I will carry the two-year-old child and walk off. Okay, because this child is out of control, you need to be in control. It is hard. Again, press the pause button to see that crawling on the floor technically is not really an emergency. It's a little bit dirty, you know, maybe everyone's looking or it's, your child's very loud in the library. Carry the child away because that, not, not because you, you know you are embarrassed, but really because you want to help the child to calm down faster. Okay? And being on the same team means making the same, the, the right decision to protect your child, to, you know, embody the authority and say that I'm your parent. I'm going to take care of you and I know what I need to do. I'm not afraid of your emotions. 
when that happens, it's so, so much easier for the child to then regain composure, okay? All right, what do we say to a child who does not want to attend school and to attention? Okay, I just answered that question earlier. The child doesn't want to attend school. Um, you, again, press the pause button, all right, throwing a tantrum. Don't, don't react and sit and tell their child, you've gone to school several times. Why don't you want to go to school today? That is adding on to the anxiety. There is no need for you to fix the problem. Okay, this is something you need to remember. Um, you think that when our kids act out, when they throw a tantrum, okay, I need to go and fix it. But no, these tantrums are important because they help the kids learn about emotion regulation. Let them experience disappointment, frustration, um, rejection, because after these experiences, the child will then feel better and feel happier again, calmer, and these back and forth change of emotions is what we are going to help do to help our kids strengthen the emotion regulation skill. If the child doesn't get the experience or um, any negative states of emotion, it's so much harder for the child to then work through it the next time he feels disappointed. And we all know you cannot shield your kids from these negative states of emotion throughout their lives. You know, especially when they grow older, when they go to school, now that my kids are in primary school, a lot of things are out of my control. I don't really know what's happening in school. If my child loses his water bottle or gets into an argument with a friend, this child will need to know how to handle it. And the child can handle it when he or she has experienced the frustration or the anger at home. And us as the parents, we teach them the skills to manage those emotions so that the kids can apply it when we are not with them. So it's really, really important that you model it. If you don't know how to model this calmness or you don't know how to teach the skills, I highly recommend, you know, go plenty of resources, go and read books, listen to podcasts. You can just follow some of Instagram accounts are really, really helpful. If you enjoy mine, I'm very glad I'm here to support you. Um, so it is crucial that you are intentional with how you respond to their emotions, okay? Nobody told me that parenting is about managing emotions. It's about managing your own emotions and your kids' emotions. It is so difficult to do because, again, like I mentioned yesterday, we were never taught how to manage our own emotions. So let's work on it together, okay? So I also want to remind you that the early bird bonus ends tomorrow. So if you are keen to learn how to manage emotions, my online course from Yelling to Connecting is open right now. So just in case you didn't see the link, it's in my bio, okay? All right, I'm going to answer just a few more questions here. Uh, let me see. What can I do if my child does routine tasks such as homework and eating slowly? despite repeated reminders of time constraint. This is also my trigger, okay? I know um, I, have, I have two kids, right? My older child, he is quite prompt. You know, he knows how to get things done. He knows he has training. He will prepare everything in advance. But my younger one needs a lot more reminders and it can drive me nuts at certain times. So I completely understand the frustration. You've told the kids to eat stop talking but i realize sometimes it's really about their temperament as well okay what i do and i, I i'm quite sure it's um it's been working well right especially in the morning is to help her learn to focus on one task to do at one time so if the kids are distracted that's why they do the homework slowly or they're eating slowly i'm going to teach you how to block off the distractions to get your kids to focus to do one thing at one time uh, in a few ways. Number one, tell your child, I need you to do one thing. I need you to take out your homework from your back. Can you tell me what is that one thing? So this is for children who are easily distracted. They don't know what's happening. They go over to take their books. They, they saw a, a toy and they went to play with it. Okay, so some kids are like that. You can't really change their innate temperament, but you can set up, you know, systems around to support them. So one thing, um, the other thing I did was uh, for the morning routine, right? For my girl, um, I started setting a timer. So in the morning now, because I realize she's easily distracted. For example, if she wants to put her uniform, then she sees, um, you know, her file. She wants to go and put her file back into her bag. So 
actually it happens to me as well. Sometimes I'm easily distracted. So for her, I set a timer for three minutes and the timer is right in front of her. I'm going to give her three minutes to put on her uniform only. Then she'll get another two minutes to put all her snack box, her water bottle and her books in her bag. So far, it's, it has worked really, really well. Um, she keeps to that routine. Also because I told her that I know you need support and mommy and daddy are here to support you. This is what I mean by being on the same team as your child. For those who have just joined us, today's session is really for you to remember that you are your child's teammate. So a teammate is supportive. A teammate is there to help you know, your, your teammate gain success. And your, a teammate is where you share your calmness, you co-regulate with your child and support your child. Okay? All right. Um, okay, let me just take a few more. Two and a half to three year old will immediately go into a whining and crying state when expressing what he wants before I even answer a yes or no. How should I teach him? Okay, if the child starts to whine and cry very often, you want to intervene before it escalates. So go down to the child, again, be on the same team as your child and look at your child. You are telling me that whatever you want to, you know, eat your dinner now, all right? Or um, doing that verbal communication, letting your child know, I know what you mean. You want this, you wish this can happen, and your non-verbal communication will be looking your child in the eye or even talking softer and being beside your child. So you want to preempt your child by intervening early, okay? How is this live session different from your upcoming course? This is a good question. Now, my live session here is very short and I can only touch the surface of whatever I want to cover. I think um, in the course, it is a very structured program. I'll teach you step by step in four modules where you will start to first understand your child before I'll teach you a three-step positive discipline um, roadmap that I teach my students. So this roadmap, I call it ABC and it's very much um, easier for parents to understand, to know what to do. So even if you don't, um, even though I'm not, I'm not with you after I've taught you, right? Like at home when you're teaching your kids, you will still remember how to apply ABC. And I think that has been really the cornerstone of the course for the past 10 batches of parents that I have taught. So the course is structured covers everything, lots of case studies, examples, scripts, strategies, and also understanding that you're not alone because we're learning it together as a community. We have a private Facebook group where you can ask any questions you have and parents who are ahead of, of you in your parenting journey will be able to share certain tips. I don't believe in learning alone. I believe in the collective knowledge of everyone. So yeah, I'm very excited to again start this twenty. 23 uh, first time i'm holding this um this year there'll be two sessions um this year the other one is end of the year so if you're not sure this is suitable for you just drop me a dm i'll be here to answer your questions okay all right um let's see a few more okay winter said i really love your tips it really really helps now i try to hold my temper to my toddler okay i want to inform you that when you press the pause button, right, you are managing your own emotions. There's one parent who ever told me in my course that she kept it inside her. She suppressed it and she said, Justin, it's so hard. Then I realized that she has no room for herself. She did not give herself space to express, externalize her emotions. So I told her, that you are going to manage your own emotions, not by stuffing it in them, in you, you know. You need to find someone to talk to, you need to, you know, have some time for yourself, take care of yourself, have some work-life kind of like harmony. Yeah, so it's important for you to take care of yourself, okay? All right, uh, let's see. My child didn't like the countdown timer idea. Okay, so if your child doesn't like it, we'll have to think of something else. Uh, I'm sure there's something that will work it's just that you need to keep testing. Um, that is why, you know, when we learn for everyone, we can hear the different uh, strategies that you can try. So if the child doesn't like to count down, then maybe we can work on, um, you know, giving um, cues. So I ever mentioned this to my son, um, like if we're already late for school, I will tell him, oh, um, it's a mountain, it's a mountain. Because mountain means, you know, it's a very big, Hill, right but if he doesn't have a lot of 
he still have some time, I'll say, oh, it's a hill. I don't know why I thought about that. So he will ask me, mommy, is it mountain or hill? I say, oh, it's still hill. Okay, mountain. So that's how he sees that there isn't much time left. Or even with my kid, I will tell her that, you know, when you're eating your dinner, sometimes you can have, um, eat it really slowly because you have all the time in the world. So that would be, uh, so you got to, you can eat it slow. So there are three speeds, slow, medium, and fast. So if she eats it, so she'll ask me, mommy, now is it slow, medium, or fast? Then I'll tell her it's fast because you have to go for, uh, to grandmother's house. So she'll have to learn to eat fast. So yeah, there are certain ways that you can kind of figure out to see whatever works for your kid. Okay, so sorry, I cannot take all the questions. I'll just end off with this. I love this. One thing I've learned is that toddlers are manipulative. Learn to differentiate between boundary and love. I would like to disagree respectfully. I don't think that toddlers are manipulative. Reason is because they are just merely using their behaviors to communicate their needs. I repeat, toddlers or even children are using their behaviors to communicate their needs. If they don't get their needs met, they are going to do whatever it takes to fill up their cup and to meet their needs. So if as adults, we cannot identify our kids' needs, we think that they're manipulative, we think that um, they're lazy or they're naughty, they're always misbehaving, that they are not kind, then the way we respond will then add on you know, to that label. But if you can understand that children have an underdeveloped brain and that they are not out to provoke you, to make life difficult for you, to push your buttons every day, kids don't wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to make mommy and daddy angry. No, they wake up in the morning to meet their needs as a human. And for all of us humans, we have our basic needs to feel loved, to feel belonged, to feel this sense of control, to, you know, that day I was just, um, um, I, I was out and I was deciding what I want to buy for a snack. So I was walking along the mall and I saw that's old chunky, there is uh, Mr. Coconut, there are a lot of food. And I realized that, wow, I get to choose what I want to eat. And I feel good about it. But for our children for an entire day, they hardly get to choose what they, they want to do. You know, if they want to play toys, they say they could go to school. And when they are in school, you know, their teachers are telling them, you got to sit here, stand here, eat your lunch now, put your things in your bag. They don't really have any control. And that is why your kids have this unmet need that, you know, they act out. They use their behavior to try to get their needs met. And this is something I cover in module one of the course because it's so important for us to have a clear understanding of the kids. Now, I didn't have this knowledge when I first had my child. And I felt really guilty for yelling at my child simply because I didn't equip myself with the information that I needed to know about how children or how humans develop. And that is also the reason why I started out, you know, sharing with parents that, hey, you know, this is a little bit of science, a little bit of biology, it's also a little bit of art as well, like the way you speak to your kids. But the basic thing as parents we need to do is to understand their different development stages. If you don't know that at two to three years old, children go through developmental leaps and they will experience a lot of outbursts, then you are going to, you know, label your child as naughty. That's why people call it the terrible twos. I don't believe in terrible twos. They are not terrible. They're terrific because they are curious little scientists trying to figure out how things work. They're pushing your buttons to figure out, you know, what are you going to respond, um, you know, if you ask for more screen time. And the thing is, us adults, right, if, if you are not consistent, then one day you give extra screen time, one day you say, no, you cannot watch. The children are going to be so confused. And what do they do? They continue testing because they want to figure out how things work. So throughout, you know, in the past three minutes, as I share this about toddlers, because I really want to speak up for them, there's so many things that we need to learn about our little ones. And it's hard. It's hard um, if you don't have the habit of trying to you know, dig deeper and learning what are the underlying reasons behind their behavior okay so come and join me i invite you to start this learning journey of you know being a better parent yourself but also more importantly to model how you can help your kids to grow to become emotionally intelligent okay we are our little ones lifeboat 
Thank you so much for being here. I'm just going to do uh, one summary. Or rather, I, I want you to tell me what you have picked up today. What is the key idea of today's session? After pressing the pause button, what do you want you know, to, to do? You want to calm your child down? And the main idea is to be on the what with your child. <laughs> okay, type it out again. When you are typing out, you are actually breaking that cycle of thinking that your kids are out to get you. The kids are making life difficult for you, but your kids are not giving you a hard time. They are having a hard time. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Mayin said we are on the same team as your kids. Same team. So what do you do with your teammates? You don't scold your teammates. You don't punish your teammates. You support your teammates. If your teammates are having a hard time, you are there to you know help them. So the next time you see your kids, you know, crying, hey, teammate, come, let me help you. If your kids are struggling, are crying, hey, let me help you. If you remember, I'm here to help my child. I'm not here to punish my child. I'm not here to be in control of my child. Then you won't be shouting. You won't be shouting. Why do you want to yell at your kids? You know why the parents yell? Because they don't know what else to do. They lose control of the situation themselves. But if you know how to manage it, then you wouldn't need to yell at your kids. You wouldn't need to punish because you know that's how they develop. You wouldn't need to, um, you know, hit them or spank them just to get them to listen. You're not going to use your um, your size to overpower them and make them listen to you. Okay? I'm so glad that all of you are answering the questions correctly. I'm assuming you understand what I mean. Calm ourselves, hold space for us, be on the same team. Thank you for summarizing. I'll see you. Not tomorrow, on Thursday, because tomorrow I'm meeting my Sprout members. They are the parents in my parenting membership. So we meet once a month and I'll be there to help them for an hour. But I'll come back to you guys again. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out again. Early bird bonus ends tomorrow. From your link to connecting is where I'm going to empower you with even more strategies, mindset shifts, and to help you be better parents to guide your kids. Right, I'm via my DMs. So see you. Bye-bye.